Is the Bitcoin bear market back on? In this video, I'm going to be talking you through the potential of actually a very big drop to come on Bitcoin. I'm sure you are very much aware of these massive World War III talks that are happening, right? You see the stock market down red day after day after day over the past few weeks. You're seeing the Bitcoin halving upcoming, but also a lot of people viewing this as actually a move down, especially prior during that halving. So a very big drop to come off the fundamentals too. A lot of places that we look, they all have very bearish scenarios. You know me, I am absolutely historically been a very big Bitcoin bear. You look through every bear market there's been, I've been absolute four and foremost shorting heavily. <laughs> okay, so I have the experience of being a bear. I have the experience of shorting Bitcoin heavily. Shorted $69,000 all time high, right? Brought that all the way down to 15K. So I have the experience and I have what is necessary to analyze these charts in a non-biased way. Just as I have been one of the biggest bears you'll ever see on Bitcoin, I've also been one of the biggest bulls. Okay, I've been long and chill for the past half a year, right? I've managed to trade this from 30K very successfully up to $74,000. And just as I've traded bear markets, bull markets, we have to analyze the charts to understand when these cycles start to change. So the title of the video probably will be, you know, is this Bitcoin bear market back on? Well, let's go through the charts together. This is the only way that we're going to decide. Analyzing the technical analysis and the charts. I'm not going to be looking at the Bitcoin halving. I'm not going to be looking at potential World War Threes. I'm just going to be looking at the charts. Okay, so let's do what we love. Analyze the charts and get ready for some epic trades ahead of us. So... How likely is it, okay, that there is a bear market about to happen or that we're turning the cycle? Okay, I, I absolutely feel that over the past, you know, six months, just over, uh, we, we've been in a bull market. We've been very clearly making higher highs and higher lows, higher highs and higher lows, and we made a brand new all-time high. OK, so when we look at this really clearly, we can obviously see this is a bull market. Then we had a very deep retracement during COVID for a bear market, giving us a lovely rise into a bull market, giving us a very <laughs> big down drop to form a bear market. And now what are we in? We are back into a bull market, right? So the cycle goes through these different markets, bull and bear, bull and bear. And you need to, as a trader, understand when that market cycle is turning. So are we about to enter now into a bear market? Well, what we can see, Bitcoin, especially when we look at uh, charts and more history, but just let's just see the last few years of price action. We can see here we went from bull to bear, and that was simply one section of price action down to form a bear market. OK, when we look at 2021, we obviously formed our first pivot high, large drop, retests before the change of market to a bear market. So what we could be looking to ourselves is two different scenarios, and I will explain how we know which scenario is going to be happening. Let's take the first example. So what we can do here, this is a nice like type of idea, is to pull something known as a fractal. And we'd start to pull old price action and analyze it, how it could be similar to this current price action, right? We can see this is fairly similar, right? Same similar uptrend, same highs put in, okay? That would give us a fake out of the triangle, of the sideways range that we're in right now low. So that would see us move down below this range, retests before ultimately coming down to around probably $40,000 retests back down to below 30k. So that's how we could be looking, you know, this is potentially the next year ahead, right? That would be a much more bearish scenario where we're not making new all-time highs. Well, again, game of probabilities, let's be prepared for bullish bearish scenarios. Okay, what we can be looking at next is more of a scenario of we are about to get a retrace and I've already told my team uh, today in my daily morning update that I feel that it is very likely that we're moving down to at least $58,000. Okay, so I have no longs open from the past few months. I am uh, not necessarily bearish, right? But I am definitely recognizing there is weakness in the charts. You know, I'm, I'm simply trading the charts and I recognize that. And so what we can look at is a retracement scenario. Again, this previous one is bringing us down to $30,000, okay? Fairly bearish. What we can do is we can actually pull the similar pattern, but with more of a, first of all, bullish outlook, right? And that is something that we'd be looking at like this. 
where we have made our way upwards here. Okay, we've made our way upwards over the past six months or so. And we're putting in this sideways range that we're putting in right now. <clears throat> Before a little bit more of a fake out towards $50,000. And you can see here, I have two, in my opinion, uh, zones of interest. The first is take out the range low with a swing fair panel failed auction. And if that doesn't hold, again, this is the long opportunity, right? If that doesn't hold though, then we can expect sub 50,000 to come. And in this fractal scenario, that would actually bring us down to around sub $50,000 around that zone before actually another increase to slightly breach and make a new all-time high. Of course, this is the time where we need to be analyzing greatly the order flow and seeing what really one of two scenarios. Do we get very similar to what we saw back in 2021, 20, 2022 with the fake out of the highs? Or will we actually see more of a bullish continuation break hold scenario? Again, we can only really analyze that once we got the order flow and the volume confirmations in. But to be aware of these both scenarios for me is absolutely of utmost importance. If I'm, if, yeah, it totally is. You've got to be aware of those scenarios. And I don't think you want to be massively bullish, massively bearish, but trade the charts. Open yourself up to, um, you know, both sides of the market. Again, if you're only a bull and you only look for longs, you will get wrecked, right, when the market downturns. And if you're only a bear, well, you're going to miss out on all of the bull markets. So you want to put yourself in a position where you are actively analyzing both sides, the bullish scenario, the bear scenario, and you're actively scanning for both longs and shorts. So I know myself as a trader, when I drop to support, I look for long trades. When we breach up into resistance, I look for short trades. Okay, and I will always be honest I will always be transparent with you, with my trades, my bias, and what I'm looking at next, okay? Just as we can celebrate the winners, you know, when we're making some massive profits to the upside, I will also hold up my hands and say when I make an incorrect decision, right, where I make the wrong trade. And that is something that I've done, obviously, with this triangle fake. Well, the, the triangle fake out in the end was like a good trade, right? Warning Bitcoin triangle fake out pattern. We were looking for the rise, fake out, come back in, and the drop. OK, and of course, I didn't actually execute that short trade in the end. And when I analyzed this, I was focused far too much on the higher term time frames. I was aware of the fake out. I was planned for the fake out. We even saw the fake out. And my reasoning of not taking that short was overall we're in a bullish market. I was too focused on the weekly, monthly term time frames, higher term time frame profile. So when I'm seeing this price action here, I'm seeing it as, okay, overall, you know, I have all my longs from average price of around $30,000. You know, I can absolutely be comfortable even if we pull back to $40,000. My longs are still in profit. So I'm view, I am made the mistake, and I hold my hands up and say that was a mistake. I didn't execute on that short trade because I was too focused on the higher term time frame picture. And that actually made me miss taking a short trade, which my day trader brain is like, that was a very bad decision. And this is something that I've analyzed, journaled about, spent a lot of time reflecting. And it really makes me want to come back to being a day trader because it's like, yeah, that, that was a bad uh, trade to miss. It's something you were planned for. You really let your brain become too focused on the higher term time frame swing trades and miss a golden opportunity for sure. And trust me, that pains me. <laughs> it pains me a lot, right? Not just the account balance, but also just myself. Not taking that trade is something like, oh, that is, that's something that annoys me. And that's not something I'm ever going to let happen again, right? It's all well and good to make a mistake. And I honestly can say I made a mistake there. But what separates that mistake to becoming a pattern, right, is analyzing and, and, and fixing that. What makes sure that doesn't happen again? I myself have realized, hey, I need to focus once again. <laughs> Good news, to be honest, for many people on those lower term time frames, on these type of structures. For me to see and predict a fake out, to then get the fake out and still be like, okay, even if we retrace to 58K from here, hey, it's still overall bullish. I'm still happy to long the dip. Yeah, you know, when I analyze that, it's, it's still, you know, overall missing a $10,000 drop. So I understand the perspective of, okay, even if we drop to 50K, well, my longs are still in profit. It's still bullish overall. I need to rethink that and think to myself, hey, yeah, we can drop from 70K to 50K overall higher term time frame, still bullish, but let's start to execute on those downtrends. Exactly like I would have done before and then became a little bit overconfident 
too focused on the higher term time frame, missed some trades. And, you know, I've analyzed that, realized what I need to do and that's get back on these lower term time frames. But anyway, where I was going with that, I'm always honest and transparent with you. Okay, you never have to worry that I'm going to be hiding things or have some ulterior motives. No, I'm just honest and, you know, want to do what's best for everybody here. And that is give you my thought processes of these charts. And so I do feel that it's very nice if we can get this move to around $59,000, $58,000 zone. Again, I view it as a zone, $1,000 either way of 58 k and then really just review what goes on at this range low. Again, at the range low, we do not want to turn bearish. This is not the time to be bearish. I will say that. Uh, of course, we have to be prepared for a much bigger drop to the downside. But I would not personally be looking uh, to, to short here. You're putting yourself in a very, very risky scenario because if you short here, we're already down at 20 odd percent to the downside, right? You, you are shorting at the lows where this is a long opportunity, right? So you can absolutely start to short squeeze here because you are seeing a lot of shorts open. You are seeing people very bearish indeed. And myself personally, I would prefer to take no trade here then take a short trade and put myself in the risk of like a big short squeeze. I don't want to be in that scenario. So I, I wouldn't short here prior to range low. Again, you might have short opportunities like, for example, loss of the range, retests, and then you have a little bit of a different context, right? You're getting a retest where you have an invalidation. But short in here, I think you are, although it could pay off, it could pay off, right? If you just go vertically down from here, hey, you could say it was a good trade. But I think you want to think of that long-term focus. You know, you could get lucky with a short here and price just blast downwards fair enough but if you if you try and do that repeatedly you are going to get burnt at some point you're going to get burnt let's think about it we've reached that low once where well, if you shorted here in fomo wrecked you got a retest if you shorted here wrecked if you shorted even this you did would have got wrecked because we had like a pretty large percentage move to the upside right so i don't want to put myself in positions where i'm shorting range lows where one should be looking for longs i also personally have not activated a long trade here because that doesn't fit my criteria either right i would like to see a swing failure pattern or failed auction of the range low or alternatively some form of sign of strength right at the very least let's talk about things such as getting into value area lows once more Okay, we can see we have a pretty nice range that was going on here, value area lows up to, okay, only point of control. But that from here is an acceptable long up to point of control, take profit one, of course, the rest of that trade stopped out. But nevertheless, that's a profitable trade. So there are trades to be had, but you do want to be looking for some signs of strength, in my opinion rather than just longing a dip, um, you know, because we've all seen that expression, right? Long the dip and then it continues to dip and continues to dip and continues to dip. So you do want to come in here with a technical thought process. If you are looking to long the dip, you have to have an invalidation, never risk liquidation. Okay, so come in here, make a plan, execute your plan. My plan doesn't mean, uh, and I never will be shorting the range low. This is an area of support, but I do also not want to take a long trade yet, right? For me, I want to wait for an executable, short trade or long trade to be had. And until that happens, I will be remaining patient. As you can see, openly here sharing with you all, I'm looking for the range low next, where I'll look for that swing fur pattern of failed auction. If we do not get that, I do expect sub $50,000, that zone to come. Okay. Uh, those zones, of course, I'll happily look for a um, a long trade, okay, overall. And I think those fractals that I've shared with you today are important to be aware of. Okay. So, yeah, for me, that is the analysis of the day. I hope that you've enjoyed it. Again, if you want to see more of myself, where we're giving out daily plans, all the context, the daily live stream updates, of course, you can get that via the website, chartchampions.com. Uh, there you have access to myself, Igor, Rivalry, and Severin, who are all also very bearish. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah, they, they've actually traded this downtrend better than me. So shout out to the other coaches. They've taken some excellent short trades and made some pretty epic profits off their shorts. So, yeah, <laughs> you've got a whole bunch of traders here to pay attention to. Thank you ever so much. Hope you've enjoyed. And, yeah, I, I think you do need to prepare yourself uh, for a move down. At least be prepared be aware of that scenario, right? Because if you're not aware of it, then you will get wrecked if it happens. And we know trading is a game of probabilities where anything can happen. So yeah, hope you've enjoyed. If you want to see more, chartchampions.com. Thank you ever so much. And that's me signing out. Thank you and goodbye. Cheers.